Okay, so um, we just wrapped up the supplemental budget and passing of the FRA. Um, and it's no secret that the Democrats are really frustrated with uh, the way today has played out. We had many amendments ready to go um, that could have been put on on the supplemental budget to address this crisis. Um, and unfortunately, the Republican leadership did not accept any of them. Um, while putting together our amendments, we looked at what other states have been doing across the country, looking at the amounts that they are putting in um, from their reserve funds to, uh, to fund things like mobile testing units, increased dollars to county health departments, um, making sure that um, the, the governor has additional authority to spend um, whatever he may need to spend in the coming weeks and possibly months. Um, unfortunately, the bare minimum was done today. Um, and. It's hard to find a word for the way that I know we are all feeling right now. Um, I will say that for me, I am ultimately disappointed in the fact that we as leaders in the Missouri House are not taking further action to put together a plan. Uh, the conversation thus far in the past week, a little over a week from, from the governor's office has been, you know, we're waiting on the federal government to do this or we're relying on the county health departments to do that. Um, our county health departments have done an amazing job, but it's our job to support them with dollars and infrastructure. And um, frankly, the buck should not be passed on, and I feel like that's what happened today. Um, so with that, we're happy to take questions. The news of the first uh, COVID-19 related death in Missouri, in Boone County, came in the last few minutes of the, uh, of the uh, uh, meeting today. Did, uh, would that, would the day, how it played out, have changed if that news had maybe come at the beginning of the day? You know, I don't know if the way it played out would have changed if we had known about the death prior to. Um, I would like to hope that it would have. Uh, but for I know for us, at the, at the end of the day, we, we knew this was coming. There is more than enough data to show uh, what is coming before us. And um, I, I wasn't surprised to get that news today. And so um, I wish that colleagues on the other side of the aisle would have taken note of that, um, and it shouldn't have to take a death for us to be leaders. And it's unfortunate that um, that may have been the case today. When you talk about comparing Missouri to other states, are you comparing apples to apples as far as the fiscal year ends in two and a half, two and a half months, three months? Yeah. Uh, versus a full year and all that. Yeah, it's, it's obviously every state government is different. Every state, state makeup is different. Um, of course, we're looking at states who that have more confirmed cases, more deaths than Missouri does. Um, but what we were looking at was uh, not just dollar amounts, but we, we were looking at dollar amounts, where they were coming from, for, uh, specifically their emergency funds or their general revenue fun funds or federal dollars, what they were doing with that money, what the, um, what the direction was. But then we were also looking at policy proposals. And we were looking at both Republican and Democrat le legislatures and governors uh, just to compile a, a list. Um, organizations like NCSL and some other really great resources are doing the exact same thing. And so that's what we did. Um, and you know, our dollar amounts were um, not necessarily based on what they were doing, but I think it is an important comparison to say that we've got some states um, that are doing hundreds of millions of dollars from their reserved funds or their emergency funds that are comparable to ours in size, and we chose today to do 30. Do you support not doing the budget because of the issue of... I do, actually, yes. Um, this is something that, that we had been talking about um, since last week of, you know, we have this constitutional deadline, but this wouldn't be the first time that it hadn't been met. Um, there is precedence for that. Um, and so I know members of our budget team were having some of those discussions about pushing it off. Um, I also think that there is something very valuable to be said, and I know that Representative Smith, Smith said this, that any of the proposals that we were offering today would change the budget for next fiscal year. And I think that that's a valuable thing to be talking about right now. The CRE, which we base our budget on, is a complete mess. The number that we had before this epidemic wasn't even agreed upon by all the bodies that it should have been. Now, not knowing what is to come in the economy, trying to do our budget right now for the next fiscal year, I agree, was not responsible. What do you want to see done legislatively if the legislature comes back beyond the budget? Uh, well, I, for me, if we come back, depending on how things are and when we come back, I think we should be continuing to discuss the coronavirus. Um, there are a lot of policy ideas that, that we presented um, and will continue to present and things that we hope the governor is doing, but doing things like uh, promulgate, allowing the rule promulgation so that uninsured folks can go and seek medical treatment and not have to worry about it. Having the discussion around um, post postponing eviction notices or utility cutoff notices, those are all things that we can do policy-wise. Making sure that our school districts that are not in 
one school are getting adequate funding even though that there aren't kids in the seats. Um, and those are things that we need to be doing and they could all be done policy-wise. So if and when we come back in the coming weeks, um, if this is still happening in our country, which I believe it probably will be based on what we're seeing, then that's what we should be talking about. Without talking about, say, PDMP, for example, is on the verge of passing the governor. Should the, should the legislature address anything else? Listen, I there are a lot of really good legislative policies that um, I would love to see get done. PDMP, PM, PDMP is one that I have been an advocate for for a long time. The reality is our job right now is to protect Missourians. It's not about projects that we've been working on for years. It's not about the, you know, um, any special interests that we're working on. I mean, to, to piggyback off that, we saw just over the weekend that uh, the state government gave millions of dollars, I, I don't remember the number offhand, to, for the stadiums in St. Louis, is $60 million. Um, I don't see a number in the back. <laughs> um, millions of dollars to, uh, to um, go towards stadiums. That's something that we need to do. We need to be helping with our tourism industry. But that's not what we should be doing right now. We should not be giving millions of dollars one day to deal with something that is not this crisis. And so when we come back, that's what we will be advocating for, is to continue these discussions. Hopefully, the curve will be lessened. Hopefully, it'll be to the point where we can then go and start discussing other legislative, other legislative priorities that folks may have. But for me, until that we have put an actual plan in place and stepped up to our roles as leaders in state government and actually are doing something to help protect our people and to help support our local municipalities, I don't think we should be doing anything else. On the floor today, you spoke about the need for leadership. You mentioned from the president, from you as a body, but also from the governor. What more do you think Governor Person should be doing? Um, there's a lot that he could be doing, um, and I am sure between all of us we could come up with a pretty lengthy list, you know, off the top of my head, and I, and I believe that this is happening today, uh, but requesting for SBA loans for our small businesses to be able to stay afloat. Um, there are um, a myriad of things that we know he could be doing. I'm happy to turn it over to Representative Carpenter to list off all of them if you want to. Well, I, yeah, I, mean, I, th I think the, the, the most immediate thing is addressing healthcare capacity and infrastructure and making sure that we're in a place that if we're unsuccessful in flattening the curve, which we all hope to God that, that, that we manage to do that and that hospital overruns aren't a thing that await us in the future, but we need to be preparing in case it is. And it's up to the governor to start identifying sites, facilities, uh, start bringing in extra uh, retired uh, healthcare workers if necessary, start making those plans now, uh, fully fund it now. Uh, we need to be contracting with, with folks who make respirators and ventilators. We ought to be doing everything we can to order more of those. Uh, masks, uh, PPE, everything related to the healthcare treatment of uh, coronavirus and the potential for thousands of Missourians needing ICU care and our current hospital infrastructure not having the capacity to deal, to deal with that, as we're already seeing in states right here in the United States and certainly uh, countries around the world. That's what he needs to be doing. And um, we ought to be funding that to the best of our ability. And, and this, you know, like uh, Minority Leader Quaid said, this needs to be an urgent ma ma uh, matter that uh, everybody's rowing together on, that we're all working together to try to solve this. And we cannot wait. I mean, this is not the kind of thing where we can wait until it gets a lot worse and then maybe start. That work needs to have begun already, and if not, today. symptoms or they're being tested? Um, I am made aware of some individuals who um, definitely are not here due to health risks, but I'm not at liberty to talk about their individual personal situations. Health risks because they shouldn't be out and about with A whole lot of reasons. Um, maybe, I don't know, Leader Quaid or Representative Carpenter can speak to kind of the atmosphere within the chamber. I wasn't in there trying to minimize uh, people being in there, but it seemed pretty solemn, specifically debating your amendment to yeah. free up more funds. Um, you kind of pleaded that it wasn't partisan related. How was the atmosphere in the chamber during that? I will say that since the beginning of this discussion, really mid last week, um, our caucus has been working very hard and very closely with leaders of the other side. We don't think that this should be a partisan thing. This is a very serious conversation, and we needed to come up with solutions together. Um, as you all know, we put forth proposals last week. We gave them to the leadership of the other side, offered, put your name on it. 
doesn't even have to be ours. You file these amendments, they're yours. We don't care. These are things that we could do. Those conversations continued until late last night, um, actually even into this morning, um, to try to get folks on the other side to understand that this that our, there's no political strategy here. This is a crisis that I hope that we are all working on together. Um, there was some of that working on together. I don't want to allude to the, the fact that there wasn't. Um, but I know that um, it was very intentional for myself um, and, and I know other members of my caucus to have this tone of not being aggressive to make sure that folks know that we are trying to work together and that we are in this together. Um, in terms of the solemnness of it, this is a serious situation. Um, it can be difficult and frustrating, frankly, when folks are taking something like this so very lightly. Um, as, as already discussed, we had a death today regarding this. And as I've said over and over again, it is our jobs as leaders to put together a plan. And so, yeah, the tone was really solemn until, in my opinion, they got to the point where it couldn't be solemn anymore and folks were just flat out frustrated. Um, I don't know if Representative Carpenter has anything to add to that. Uh, I totally agree. And I, you know, leaving today saying we're going to leave it up to the federal government to fix this is a massive abdication of our responsibility as the leaders of state government. It's up to us, it's up to the governor. It, the fact that we're not going to come back for some indefinite period weeks from now, and we're leaving today having accepted maybe $30 million of federal funds that would have been available regardless of our action. And we're not putting, we're not passing any legislation to help on the economic front for folks who are affected by this or the healthcare front. And we're not pumping uh, significant resources into preparing for what's coming. And we're leaving four weeks on end is a massive abdication of our responsibility. And I am dis disappointed is uh, uh, not a strong enough word. There was a representative <clears throat> on the floor today who said we need to stop making this sound like a doomsday scenario. Do you think everyone in the legislative body is taking this seriously? Um, I think based on those statements, the answer is no. Um, as, as I think we've stated many times uh, over the past few days, this is a serious matter. And the proposals that we've put forward and the discussions that we've had are based on data. They're based on what other states are doing. These are not things that the Democrats just made up in the middle of the night. Um, this, this, this came from things that we're seeing across the country and across um, in states very nearby to us that need to be done. Um, no, I don't think so. And I think that that is partially what has brought us to this state right now where we have made no plans is because, you know, even the president just over a week ago was still calling this a hoax. Um, and hopefully, maybe now, I don't know, hopefully it's not the right word, but maybe now that there has been a confirmed death in Missouri, the folks who should be taking leadership roles will, will start stepping up and taking it seriously. I asked the majority party as well, but typically legislative spring break is the halfway mark, um, and you can talk about the legislation or some things that have been done prior to this that yeah. you're proud of or excited about. What are those? To be very honest with you, I don't have the capacity to tell you anything that I am proud of that has happened this session or anything that I hope that happens if, if we come back. The only thing that should matter to people in this building right now, those of us who make these decisions, should be putting a plan together. Um, and leaving here, even if we come back, with not having a plan in place is shameful and there is nothing to be proud of this legislative session. Okay, thank you all so much for your time. Thank you.